So I feel like we have some insight into AI. And it was my specialization in the little bit of a uh, little bit of college I didn't finish. So, but still, regardless, you have experience enough mm. with it to talk about it, and I have some level of experience with it, just based off of uh, some of the image generation that I do, either with or without Chance, and with or without his AI, or our thumbnails and stuff on the channel. Mine gets angry. I like to see yours dream. It, like, I just hope it's having happy dreams when it just pumps oh. something out and it's like, what is that? AI is largely trained on the sum total of the internet. Because what else do you have to train it on? So, train it on documents and Rape the internet. Rape a bunch right? of stuff up and feed it to the black box. Right. So, what does the internet look like today now that AI, with the advent of AI? Well, there's more and more AI content on the internet. You ever make a photocopy of a photocopy? Xerox of a Xerox. I remember the there's, Xerox stores. There's definitely a feedback loop, and we've actually seen a number of, at least in terms of stable diffusion, which for image generation is the open source model that's been released by Stable Foundation. There's a few closed source models, and we don't know what their training looks like. But with stable diffusion, we've seen an influx recently in models being trained to produce a certain image then producing copious amounts of that image and then being retrained on themselves and actually improving quality so i know where you're coming from if you're just scraping like everything at once you're going to get this this feedback degradation loop but if you're taking high quality results and retraining using those to pinpoint um exactly what you want the ai to train on like telling it good boy you did this right and giving it a treat Mm -hmm. and, and then we've seen actually a pretty good improvement in specific niche qualities that people are looking for. And when I say specific, I mean, it's like, it's like the people that are doing this are training it. Like, I want to be able to create landscape art like this particular artist. They'll pump out a thousand images by that artist, pick the ones that are most resemblant to it, and then retrain it using those. And then go back, go back, go back and do that until it is like where they want it to be so we've been seeing that that's interesting because in my mind i think you know as you continue to train it it'll just devolve into gobbledygook you can't overtrain the internet will be more gobbledygook but the, the overtrain when stuff gets overtrained it turns into deep dream basically it reverts back to its basest form and everything looks like deep dream and there's just fish and eyeballs everywhere um, so that is a thing that happens, but that is a, it's an algorithmic thing that can be tuned. Um, it, it's really interesting. I like to think of these AI models as almost in my head, mechanical machines that you can, uh, you, you can literally like untorque a bolt by a pound and get like crazy, crazy different results on it, you know, or you can over torque it and you shear it off and now you've broken the whole model. Maybe maybe I'm looking at it wrong because, yeah, my concept of that was kind of a, well, what we need, what's going to be very important, and I think this is going to be important regardless, is AI detection technology. To know whether content was AI generated and to detect that so that it can be excluded from the future models of AI, but also so for us humans to know, okay, did, did a biological entity mm -hmm. create this or not? It's so, out there, but it's not super efficient yet um i think it's going to become very important i've got there's a there's an extension i have for automatic 1111 that does something similar to that it's able to look at it and take a pretty good guess i mean when, when you're talking about that so we got we got to where we're at in ai from hot dog or not in, right in terms of ai image detection we are at the hot dog or not stage and we're probably looking at like another half a decade before we're at a point where the oh, detection Oh, I think we're well beyond the hot, hot dog or not stage. I, I, th I don't think that's fair. For detecting them, not really, to tell you the truth. I mean, the ones that are out there that can do it, do it with probably like 40 to 70% accuracy. And that's what the, I mean, hot dog or not models were doing that within like a year of being around. And for those that don't know, hot dog or not is, it was an old... 
basically the hello world of machine learning mm -hmm. um in, in so that you would feed an algorithm a picture of a sailboat and it would say zero percent hot dog and you feed yeah. it a picture of a hot dog and be like 100 percent hot dog it's what it sounds like yeah is it a hot dog or is it not <laughs> and that's kind of where all this started and so, no I, I think we're about in that stage for detection well and we talked yesterday about self-checkout machines that's the the great hope the savior of self-checkout machines is can AI detect whether you're actually scanning the right thing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I don't know. I feel like that's applicable, but what I'm, maybe I'm thinking about it wrong because I'm thinking about it like a tool, like a photocopy. Maybe that's the wrong analogy. It's a very tinkerable tool. Think of it more like that 3d printer you've got out there Well, I, than a photocopier. Well, even that, you know, um, but Okay, so if I think about it differently and I think about it as creating uh, generalized artificial intelligence, am I using that? Uh, AGI. Missing? Yes. What does that stand for? Artificial okay. general intelligence. Uh, artificial yeah. general. Yeah, thank you. Artificial general intelligence. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong because that's not how a human learns. A human learns based off of its mistakes. A human learns off of itself just as much as it learns off of others and if this is true intelligence maybe the model that we talk about in terms of well it's a it's photocopying itself maybe it's just learning off of itself will that, that pull it further into itself though and out of our world yes there there is a strong we've been seeing that at least with chat gpt and the gpt models particularly there are other open language models that have been doing a very very good job of being both open source which i love and and having more humanized results but gpt in specific has been pulling into itself recently every update that they add to it it pulls more into itself and i frankly think that it's a byproduct of the censorship and the the context removal on GPT that is causing that because they are shutting down lanes for it to think it has only itself to reference in certain instances because there's um with at least some of the open source because I run an open language model off of that box as well it just runs very poorly you can feed it context you can make it you can like say you feed it a, a speech from Reagan right and you tell it like this is how you think now uh, extrapolate like literally type in open language give it the speech and say okay this is this is how you think extrapolate the things that would cause a person to say that and integrate those into your thought capabilities and it will do that so th that in and of itself kind of tells me that i'm looking at it in, in the wrong model in terms of a machine because just like raising a child it depends on you know, how your child turns out, how much of it is environment and how much of it is the input, the context mm. you give that child to understand, to build its model yeah. of reality. And the, the, the way, way that these networks work is honestly, in terms of computer science, as closely modeled to the way that we understand the brain mm. working now and that context has weight and the weight of that context defines what the output is going to be in relation to an input so i mean you'll have the way convolutional neural networks work is you'll have like say a sandwich of a bunch of circles and each of those circles is going to have a weight to it and if you pick one on the left side it is going to follow a path that makes sense for the the weight and this is a very simplified version of this it's going to follow a path through those nodes that makes sense for what your input weight is it's gonna it's gonna fly fly through and look at the different weights and find the closest weights relating to that input and then ping you an output on the other side. So it's, they, they travel through, and, and modern convolutional neural networks travel through hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these nodes, and they change their weights. Like, I, I don't want to say on the fly because a lot of stuff is pre-baked in when you train a model, but the, the weight adjustment is... It doesn't happen like in the actual nodes themselves, but it's able to kind of rewire the way it looks at those weights and say, okay, you're not looking for this. You're actually looking for this weight down here. And it'll, it'll realize inside of a contextual session 
um, because th these things are like RAM. When you when you close them out, when you stop using them, they lose their context. So you have to rebuild that context if you want to use them again. But they, they they're able to kind of on the fly change the way they look at those weights. And that dark dial deep dive moment was brought to you by Dark Dial. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was deep. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we just read a headline, and sometimes we go deep. I mean, some of that was hard to follow for someone like me, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't like. I follow you idea. to some degree, but mm -hmm. I think even you don't fully understand what you what you're saying. Like, no, I no, I it's some, some really, really specific, specific stuff, stuff, and I've done, done a lot of I honestly probably multiple hundreds of hours on research on this topic in general, and it's still difficult to follow even the people that are making this stuff at like a foundational level at like an enterprise level don't quite get how it works they right. understand no i've heard them talk they, they they're <laughs> like it's a black box us too well and you made my voice an ai voice and it freaked me out well, that yeah, we've done I, that. I plugged that into a website that oh, did that for it was me. Yeah, really freaky to hear my own voice but in a different pattern we've, we've mm. talked Ugh. about that because he did my voice on that little monopoly short that you made and uh, I watched it like three times and didn't realize it was my voice. And Jacqueline walked in and was like, is that you? And I'm like, oh, it is, but it's not. Well, I knew the pattern sounded off, but I was like, I could tell it was still your voice. Hi, this is Gavin with Dark Dial. Welcome into the CRT. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps us out as a channel and it helps you find us that much easier. If you can leave a comment down below, we'd love to know what you thought about the video. We're going to be live typically on Thursdays, 6 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Central. And be sure to check out darkdial.com. We've got a cool forum you can sign up for, as well as links to all of our social accounts on there. Thanks for watching.